So I understand there's a cool little story behind how the Titleist irons actually got in the bag. I don't know if it's cool or not, but uh, you know, I'm having a guy build my clubs back in England, uh, custom golf works in Sunningdale. You know, I kind of feel like testing out on tour I find quite time consuming, distracting. I don't love doing it out on tour. So I wanted someone who could really help me at home. And uh, we just went through a few different heads and I, you know, I really like the look of the, of the Titleist and uh, performed, they, you know, tested them and they actually performed really, really well. Launch spin, but also I think a little bit of dispersion. You're not gonna get a ton of difference out of a blade, but it was more just comfort of how they looked. But the more I put them in play, you know, there are subtle differences between different irons. Um, these ones I'm beginning to learn, they come out a little quicker out of the rough, you know, a few more jumpers, which, you know, might just be a groove thing, you know, off the fairway they spin just as much and just as good, and, uh, you know, the jumper can be a valuable club in the bag, you know, if you learn how to play it properly, so, yeah, um, that's the adjustment I'm learning to make with those, and then, yeah, I mean, backing it up, obviously, more greens and red would be nice, and then that's where the, the putter comes into play, which is obviously, you know, Axis 1, which, man, I've been using this putter for three years plus and to be honest it's probably the main reason I left TaylorMade you know um, a lot of that was about being 14 clubs and I really wanted to, to use this product and that sort of forced me into a, a change um, because I was that dead set on putting the Axis 1 in play and I think my stats have backed it up for sure I think you know since maybe 2019 I've putted the rest of my career and um, you know again having a good putting year this year and you know obviously it's the way the CG is right through in the center of the striking face um, you know, a lot of people use uh, face balance putters, you know, where obviously the putter will stay square in that plane, you know, whereas the Axis one, it really stays square, you know, it just wants to really stay balanced to the plane in which you're putting it. So essentially the face is always trying to hug, hug the path and hug the plane. So super easy to use and you know, work hard with the team. You know, it has a funky neck on it, obviously, to, to get the balance point right and I've worked hard with the team to try to get it looking, you know, aesthetically better and better and better to, to sort of try to hide the heel as much as possible because, you know, to start off with, their first one was called the Joey, I think, and it had a huge loop, um, you know, which I think turned a lot of guys off it. So we've done a good job in terms of distributing weight and, and making it go away a little bit, right? So we're working on a ton of new shapes together. I'm enjoying collaborating with them on, on product and uh, it's kind of a fun little side hustle. I got one more question for you. I noticed you have a quad and a track man. Yeah. Now you use both. I use both that laziness a little bit. I mean, I think the track man can do, they can both do a job of each other, right? But it just depends how you like to see it. Um, you know, I like, from a player's point of view, I love the quick reference of what the quad gives me. And then my coach will love some of the detail that the track man gives him. You know, whether that be attack angle, where the low point is, you know, dynamic swing plane, that type of stuff, which is telling him how the handle of the club is, is working through the ball, you know, versus I'm just trying to get ball speed and spin and, and distance. You know, those are the quick things that I'm keying into, that the coach is keying into some of the, the technical side of the swing. Awesome. Thank you, Justin. Play well this week. Thanks, buddy.